Welcome back to a fresh episode of Missing Curfew Up Dog Fella. What's happening, big fella? Nervous, brah. Nervous, but it, it, it all switched on me in the course of, you know, two nights. I I was feeling good about all my bets. I went over three last night. We're recording on a Tuesday. Rangers, embarrassing effort. Uh, lightning. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And then obviously Colorado, Seattle, which we're going to get into, but I, I'm fucking nervous, bro. You went to Vegas and you came back just a little, little nervous. My but. bets were all looking good. Mini lost game four on me. I mean, the refereeing and that we're going to get into all that. But anyways, um, let's start right at the top here. It's just breaking news. Uh, we just, we, we were in the studio here getting ready for the show and it came out that Kale McCarr defending Norris cup, Norris trophy winner, defending Stanley cup champion, Arguably the best, honest, cleanest player to ever play in the <laughs> NHL has been dinged one game for a hit on Jared McCann, who you called as a superstar, which I, I didn't get the memo on that one. But here, the floor is yours. You were at game three. You were in the building. You're, you're invested in this series. I know it. Tell me what you think about it. We got a bottle of Camus on the line, I think, right? I you already won a bottle oh, of Camus. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, it took him to six. You took him in five, which wasn't um, really... Well, we'll drink that together. Really we'll drink that, that together maybe tonight, watching one of these games. But um, listen, so a couple of things. First off, I agree with you. Kale McCarr is not a dirty player at all. Mm -hmm. He's played the game very respectfully. He's a Norris Trophy winner. He's, uh, you know, three-time All-Star. He's a high-quality player. NHL needs this guy on the ice. That's for one. Um, two is, you're right. I was at the building. It is an incredible building. It's loud. The fans are great. They're truly a sixth man in hockey for these guys. But um, I think the situation is an unfortunate one. I think it was a match penalty because Jared McCann is hurt from a, from a high interference hit. There was no puck on the ice. It was gone. It went over the glass. Whether McCarr seen it or not, Jared McCann seen it. Jared McCann put himself in a vulnerable spot by not being ready to get hit. But it's not on him. He's not supposed to get hit there. Now... If there's a puck on the ice, Obes, that's a great hockey hit. If the puck is there, because it, I'll tell you why it's a great hockey hit. It's because Jared McCann's going to be ready for that hit. And if he's not, it's going to be legal because the puck's going to be around him somewhere. And then that's a legal body check. You yeah. hit the guy, whether, whether it's a little high following, like if, if you slow this down and, and I don't have the TV, although we got these beautiful TVs in here. If we slowed that down, he finishes a little high, but again, if Jared McCann's ready to take that hit, it's not going to look like it's a high hit. It's not going to be an interference penalty. It's going to be a fucking hard playoff hockey hit. But this is not the case. This is why we're dealing with a one-game suspension for arguably the best defenseman in the league and, and a guy that you need on your avalanche to get through this series, I believe. But um, calling this calling McCann a, a what did I say? <laughs> Superstar? Superstar? He got 41 goals. Yeah, this year and and he hasn't done much in the playoffs. No, me neither. But but I don't look at anyone on this fucking Seattle Kraken as superstars. But what they have have done is, is split the series with the Colorado Avalanche when no one really really accepted yeah, be, yeah. because we, they're not superstars. We'll, That's get, we'll get into the series a little bit, but yeah. uh, let's just stick with the hit. So you're, yeah. you're, as soon as you saw, it, you're like he's digging him a game. You thought he was getting suspended. You think it's a dirty hit? I think it's a it's a yeah it's a dirty hit because okay. there's no puck on the ice. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say I'm going to give credit to Keith Yandel. So uh, I saw it. Yans made a great point on TNT that he don't think he didn't think McCarr heard the whistle. Yeah. Now only Kale McCarr knows that. And as a defenseman, I'm taking you to the net. The puck hits my goalie. I, I'm 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 engaged in you. I'm engaged in you. I'm waiting to hear the whistle to see where the puck goes or somebody to talk to me. I'm engaged with you. I don't think Kale McCarr sees it goes into the net. Puck comes around. I don't give a flying fuck if Jerry McCann lets off and all. I'm I'm burying him. I don't give a fuck. If yeah. I think the if I think the play's still going on and I'm not 100 percent sure where the puck is, I'm gonna play him hard and finish him out. Now, I don't know. Maybe Kale didn't know the puck was out of play and wanted to take a run at him and knocked him out cold. I think I think the hit is fine if the puck is there, like you said. I think unfortunately McCann gets knocked out when he hits his head on the ice. And that's why we're in this situation. So um, only Kale McCarr knows if he knew where the puck, if, if he knew the puck was out of play and he was trying to be a prick, then I can guess good on him. I've never seen him do that as a player. I mean, this is the guy that wanted to take back a penalty. When you got tripped behind the net and he went to the ref and said, hey, that shouldn't have been a penalty. Yeah. Like, I think we're talking about maybe one of the nicest people in the game. Yeah. So I don't think he was trying to go in there to hurt McCann. No, I don't think so either. Like just, the puck was over the glass and unfortunately it's an interference call. And that's why we're dealing with this today. Yeah. Like, like I said, and, and you're bang on. It, this is a fucking hard hockey hit, and he needs to engage in that. But you also, as the best player in the world, need to know that, fuck, the puck went off your goalie's shoulder over the glass. 
And if you look, the fans are like trying to catch the puck. And it actually <coughs> fell in their hands. You, by wouldn't, the, you wouldn't notice that though. You wouldn't notice that. No, no, no. That. You but, but, notice if you're, but you're, that's, you're playing. You're still playing the game. But that's here. just how you know. That's how you know how late it was. Well, if you didn't hear the whistle. I mean, I didn't hear the whistle when it happened. But I, I, I was flipping kind of back from, from the other game. So maybe I just was out of it. But I, I didn't hear the whistle. When I, when, I, when I saw the hit, I thought, oh, the puck's not there. He's going to yeah. get two for interference. In the game five, and they reviewed it. And I thought that was the right call. I thought, listen, they didn't know the puck. He didn't know the puck wasn't there. He drove him in the boards. It's an interference penalty. It's unfortunate McCann hits his head on the ice. Yeah. If McCann doesn't hit his head on the ice, I don't think anything happens here. Yeah, though, that's... Oh, nice work with the lights. Yeah. Um, I think that... I think that the best player in the world needs to know that the play stopped, whether the whistle, he heard it or not. He mm -hmm. just needs to understand, like, if you're, if you're going to drive in... Like, if, if we go in and there's an offside and you don't hear it, but you know that the fucking puck was over the... And you just drilled some guy, like, open ice and he's just like this. That's kind of similar style. Like, if there's an offside and you know it was offside, but you don't really hear anything and you just fucking drive it, you're on your own now of saying, fuck... The whistle, did the whistle go or not? Like, cause I'm going to drive this guy into the wall. And if the whistle did go, I'm fucking done. <laughs> I mean, listen, I've, I, I'm not the right guy to ask. I mean, I run, I me neither. I, 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 I rode guys into the boards after the whistle. Me all too. Fucking playoff me series. Me too. All series. I, in fact, I looked forward to it. Yeah. You know what? I heard the whistle, but I got it. I'm finishing them. I'm so, finishing so, them. so I think, okay, one game. I, I took say, out their, I took out their best player. One game. I would Fuck say it. McCann, keep your fucking knees bent out there though. Right? Like, I mean, what? Yeah, you, no, no. You expect totally. him not to get hit ever? I mean, you can't. I think he's engaged with them. McCarr's with him. Is he not like no, looking yeah, at him? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, he's, he's, he saw the puck go over the glass. He's just kind of like this. He's just like, <laughs> fuck it. Now he's fucking like this sitting yeah, in this I fucking know. room. But um, you never want to see anyone get hurt. I'm going to say this from a perspective of I, I figured he was getting a game after watching it last night and hearing everyone on social media that McCarr was going to get a game. So I'm not surprised. Um, it's a slippery slope, man. If, if you're Ryan Reeves, if you're Marcus Felino, if you're Noel Achari, if you're any of these guys that don't have the resume of a play between McCarr, the whistles and you play between the whistles. Yeah. I mean, I'm just having a hard time with you saying this the way you played the game. Buddy, I know it, but yeah, I took like out the best player. Like, what if I like, took out your best like, player? What if Upshaw took out your yeah. best player in the series you're, late you're not, like that? You're not looking at it from a player's perspective. You're looking at it from, you got money on Seattle. You got no, Seattle. No, I'm not. You, you I'm look, fucking you looking at it. What if, what if you're the Seattle Kraken sitting on the bench last night and your best player is gone, didn't even get a fucking penalty. Did he get two? You got two. So he, there was no it original. Was a five. It then was a went five. There was no. there was no no call. Then it went to a five. Then it was a two. He got a five minute major. They reviewed it. They decided it was a two. Which at the time I thought it was the right call too. I didn't think it was a five minute major. I thought it was a two minute two minute penalty for interference because the puck wasn't there. What well, you like you said the yeah. puck wasn't there. He's got to be responsible for it. Two minutes for interference. It's unfortunate McCain hits his head on the ice. It really is. I know, but he drives his head into the wall too. I don't agree with you on that one because he wasn't I ready. He was I think just like I think it's shoulder on shoulder. McCain gets hit. I think he's fine, and he gets hit and falls back and hits his head on the ice, and then he's out. I, I mean, so so, but if Upshaw did that to your best player, I fucking come right at you next game. Uh, I know, right next game, I'd come right for you. Yeah, I know, and I so think, that's gonna happen. Well, not now; he's suspended. I know, but someone's gonna fucking try to take out one of their guys. They should. Yeah, no, that would be my answer. I totally. Yeah, but but now if McCarr gets kicked out of that fucking game, it's he's not getting suspended today. No. I, I think the refs fucked up last night. They should have McCarr. You know what? Go have a seat. You know, I don't want to be the guy responsible for kicking you out of this game. I'm going to let the it's, league do it's it. It's not on the refs, yeah. So once they go to yeah. five minute review, it goes to Toronto. It's now on Toronto and the refs together to yeah. figure out who what's the yeah. So they all talk together and they came to the conclusion. Which when I looked at it, I thought the same thing. I thought it was a two minute for interference. I didn't think it was a suspension. And now they don't know how much McCann's hurt at the time, right? You oh. you don't know that he's not coming back for sure. He's he's hurt. It didn't look great, obviously, but. Hey, it is what it is, but it's just like you're, you're dinging the best of arguably the best defense in the world. You know, like I'm just worried if I'm looking at it from an next player's perspective, if I'm Shane O'Brien now, if McCarr gets one game for that, what can I do out here? What can I do if I'm, I, I like, I don't want to put my team out. I don't want to miss playoff games, but I got to play physical. Yeah, fucking I, right. That's how I'm yeah, looking at it. Like, between the whistles, it's totally fine. I don't think he heard the whistle too. I know. I'm, I'm, well, just, I'm with the ends on that. I don't think he heard the whistle. Whether he heard it or not, it's four seconds late. It's like yeah. shot off the wall into the net. And then like you're going into the corner and then you get one of the biggest body checks I've seen in the playoffs. It's like, that is the only reason we're talking about this is because it was so late. That hit was nowhere near as big as Dumba hit. Nowhere near. No, but no, 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 no. no. Dumba's hit but was I fucking just, booyah. Yeah, yeah. 
It's unfortunate. I think at this time of year, you want the best players in the lineup. And you don't want Jared McCann hurt, and nor do I want Kale McCarr suspended. Right? I wish McCann wouldn't hit his head. We wouldn't have that other conversation. And Kale McCarr would be playing game five. It just sucks when the, when the star players, like you say, are out of the lineup for injuries or suspensions. That's all. It's, it, t- it takes a little the yeah. zing out of game five. No McCarr, no McCann. It's, it just sucks. It just sucks. Totally. Yeah. So, um, but I thought we'd hit that right off the get-go because we were talking about it. So it's good insight either way. Uh, we'll see how it unfolds. We'll get in the Seattle series moving forward here. But um, I was in Vegas for the fight. I just wanted to tell you, I bumped into Conor McGregor. Um, I was so fucking pinned when I bumped into him too. <laughs> and I just saw him out of the corner of my eye. I was leaving the excess and I was just like, holy fuck, there's Conor McGregor. And I'm just like, Mac, what's up, fellow Mac? What's up, buddy? I think he kind of looked at me. And he, well, he did look at me. And then he pointed at me like, like said hi, but kind of like stay right the fuck there, big boy. Don't come anywhere near me. But uh, I just yelled back. I love you, buddy. I love you, McGregor. You're the man. So uh, unbelievable atmosphere. Something about those fights, man. Like uh, there's just the energy in there. Yeah. Like Sugar Ray Leonard walking by me. Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> you should have seen what Holly Saunders was wearing. I mean, I, I knew she was going to look like a golfer. I knew she was going to no. <laughs> she had this little like she threw thing with. I don't even know if she she had to have a thong on, but her arse cheeks were out. Her tits were out. I, I knew she was going to slide up for the boys. Um, <laughs> Travis Kelsey, <laughs> Travis Kelsey was sitting there. I said, sugar Floyd Mayweather senior was sitting behind us. Uh, Pusha T came in the old rapper. I mean, it was just, and there was all kinds of NFL guys there. It was, it was unbelievable atmosphere. And, uh, See Conor McGregor after it was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I bet cool. for, you, for sure. You're Irishman. You're I was a fellow Irishman. I was hurting on that plane ride. It's nice Sunday. when you say all these guys are sitting behind you. Uh, shout out to Tom Riley, man. Yeah. This guy's a fucking team guy. Evan Knapp, thanks for the lift there. It was unbelievable. Flowers was in. Uh, I, I I brought Flowers because he's a big time boxing guy. I knew that that would be. He was a little upset we missed the prelims, but we walked right in for the main event, man, and it was just buzzing in there. It smelled like weed. Everyone was just puffing because Tanks okay. Davis is from Baltimore. Okay, so he's like a he's a fucking gangster thug kind of guy. Like, yeah, you can say thug, right? Can you say thug? Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. Say thug. Anyways, he's he's a hardcore guy. Uh, man, they were smoking weed in there everywhere. Binger, you would have been in heaven. I was in heaven. It was it was a great atmosphere. Binger, so. He's not much of a boxing guy. Eh? He likes the slow sports like uh, you know baseball. And I want to say this too: the middle of the ring, sponsored by who else? DraftKings, Draft Kings, baby. DraftKings Draft was all over everywhere. So DraftKings, if you ever want to bring us in to shoot some content for you, we'd love to do that. And I took Tank Davis at minus two seventy one. So that was always uh, always a nice kick. Nice. So what was it? Minus one seventy. Minus two seventy. Ooh. Yeah, he hit him with a fucking left in the second round, dropped him, and then the old body shot in the liver. Ooh, yeah, well, so what size uh, weight class these guys? They're little five, guys, one thirty five or one forty five. They're little five. guys. They're tiny, man. They walked right by us, and when they came in, and they're tiny. Fuck, they're tiny. And they just throw. Yeah. They're sweet. just tough. So uh, Uppy's World. Party, party time. time. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Uppy's World is presented by our good friends at Candidate. Promo code Curfew King. I just put a new order in. I got the Palmies and the Pineapple Express coming. Treat nice, yourself. Nice. I Ooh. actually do need to load up on some. Just get the Palmies and the Fucking Pineapple Express and you'll be in heaven. Nice. Northern Lights is good too. They're all good, but those yeah. are my staples. Staples. And yeah, Northern Lights. It's a you know, sh- little shout out, little feel for up in Alberta there. Um yeah, but like I said, went to Seattle, game three, game three, new barn, first ever playoff game. Um, it was awesome. Shout out to Kevin Turner, guy I played golf with at Bel Air, hooked me up with these incredible seats. What an atmosphere. We sat on the glass right across from uh, the Colorado Avalanche. Um, I, oh, saw your boy, I saw your boy Landy after the game. Uh, did you? How did saw Landy. How does hair look? Perfect. Fuck, he's he got saw me hair. in my Schwartz, uh, my yeah. jersey. I had my sick Johnny V jacket over it though. So I didn't look too super fan ish, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, I saw him. I saw Helm um, said, what's up to those guys. Helm's Obviously, hurt too, yeah, huh? Well, Helm didn't play. And I think he was just dealing with a little nagger. Cause well, he actually didn't, he didn't, there, he didn't play last night either. Get in there. If you're dealing with a little nagger or not get in there. But Landy, I told him, I said, oh, fuck Obes, fuck, we, we miss you out there. Yeah. You know, I'm like, Obes fuck, fucking loves, I said, Obes loves you. Buddy. He loves your hair. <laughs> he loves just your swag. I he misses him. you. I miss him. Um, so I saw Landy, uh, my boy, Ian Ritchie, great dude, uh, took me to Eldera. We played two rounds. Saw that. This poor motherfucker. He hurts his elbow playing hockey a, a week ago. That's why you don't play hockey. Exactly, right? Yeah. Playing men's league three, <laughs> three times a week. Falls on his elbow. Fucking basically breaks his, I think he's got a cracked elbow and a torn tricep. I mean, he did it all. Jesus. It's a fucking aggressive. But he, uh, listen, he got it together, wore a suit to the game, shirt and tie. The guy likes to dress up. Wow. Shirt and tie to the game. I said, you think you're playing? Fuck you? McGregor was dressed up. You should have seen his he? orange jacket. Yeah, maybe they're on. onto something. <laughs> I, mean, I felt a little unaddressed in my missing yeah. curfew t-shirt, but 
They were yeah. looking, Gregor was looking sharp. So I saw a buddy of mine, Tyler Hay. Um, we we're downstairs. It's a great barn, by the way. Is a great it? barn. The Seattle Kraken, the fans, you guys, I mean, it's a great show. Seattle needs like a hockey. How score. was the game? Yeah. I got to be honest. I didn't watch a lick of game three. Was it? I, all I know is Seattle scored the first goal. Seattle came out and Schwartzy scored their first goal in playoff history. So Shout the, out to my boy. Buzzing, it was buzzing then, eh? It was, it was buzzing. And I then, do. buddy, and then in the, the end of the first, it was a McKinnon. Like he got this breakaway obes and it was gone. He shot out of a cannon, came down, went low, like low blocker, I guess, on Grubauer. And then the floodgates kind of open and the boys struggled to get back. They tied it up going into the third 3-3. I saw that. I it was 5-3 before you could fucking sit down with your fresh cold beer. Um, I'll tell you what. I like the I like the teal towels that they have. In the the, the, the colors are great, by the way. Teal That's why Nissan Curfew nice. looks the way yeah. we do. Right? I mean, let's be honest. I like the teal towels. I like the Nirvana song. Like, look at the tarp. It's a nice what's tarp. The, what's the Nirvana song they play? I Come. like it. I love. No, no. That's not Nirvana. <laughs> that's, not, that's not Nirvana. That's not Nirvana. I like it a hey, lot. Hey, Google, Google, Google Seattle Kraken goal song. It's, uh, you were I singing like it the other day, like two episodes I ago. I love it or something. No, isn't it going like that? Lithium by Nirvana. Lithium, bro. Dude, isn't that come as you are? Hold on. I don't, I'm stand not going to try to sing on this by. fucking podcast. I I've tried to do that before. I just butchered I'll it. sing in the shower and in the car with Izzy. That's it. I just butchered it all right here. What do you got? Oh, there you go. That's lithium, yeah. But they play the part that's like... I'm so happy what a tune. That's a day. But they play the chorus. I'm not going to be able... That's what they play. I like it. That's a song. Yeah, I, was good, yeah. I like I it. I must have been that drunk. I didn't even recognize it. I wish you told me about that. I would have highlighted it. Maybe I took like a video. I like it. That's her goal song. It was it's fucking sick. Great burn. I bet With good colors and just, you know, tough that it's downtown Seattle. How's the weather? A, the weather was not bad. Yeah. Got sunny on the back nine on uh, Saturday morning, right before the game. Um, but I mean, we're just, we were crushing mimosas, man mimosas, by the way, I learned a new drink. What's while that? I was there. It's champagne and vodka with a little OJ. Wow. So you just don't nice. just, yeah, it's good drink. <laughs> it's you. nice to wake up to. Yeah. That'll snap you back. That'll um, snap you back. That'll be a great time. It's a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. I mean, the course looked beautiful. Like you said, the fans, I love the teal towels, uh, up his world party time. Excellent. Presented by candidates, promo code curfew, Cali, uh, a little update in the Larry Bettman playoff pool. Uh, the leader right now is former Toronto Maple Leaf, Philadelphia Flyer, Anaheim Duck. Where else did Loops play? Russia. Uh, <laughs> Joffrey Lupel has 44 points. No way. Uh, I'm wow. in fourth place with 35, and the updog is in 31st place, but you've made a hell of a comeback. You got 31st first, place. What do you mean? Uh, you got 31 points. Oh, yeah. You're in, uh, I don't know, four, fifth place right behind me, but you had a tough start because you had some devils, and they didn't score they didn't a fucking score goal. score one goal in the first two. So games. you're back in it. But I'm in trouble here. If, I, if Mini loses... It looks like I'm going to lose point. And if the Rangers lose, I'm, I'm fucking in one. And fuck, if the Oilers lose, I'm really in one. So I'm, I'm not too confident because, as you know, it matters if your teams go on here. No, it really does. Um, for some reason, I got an exclamation mark beside William Nylander right now. I don't know what that means. Um, fuck. But listen, I got, I'm stockpiled on basically Toronto and New Jersey. Yeah. Right, so I mean, we're I'm gonna, hanging we're, in there. We're gonna get into all those series, but they, I mean, fuck, yeah. Who's I Dick Insider? Who's Dick Insider? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, oh, I know who it is. It's Travis Dick Insiders. <laughs> Larry Bettman, that's Flowers. I'm Crispy Rice. Mac, don't, Mac you don't even need to say my name because no. I didn't even pick it. I, the, the, I would say the shocker of this right now is that Cody Libel is in last place. I would say that's probably the biggest shocker to me. He's usually money in these pools, right? I was almost going to put Trocheck on the milk carton. Troche, I know you're not listed because you're busy trying to win the Stanley Cup, but you were a period away from being on the milk carton and you scored in the third, so I left you off there. But that was his first fucking goal of the playoff. So uh, it's a great little pool. Larry Bettman, always cheating. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, eh? Larry he Bettman. is a cheater. Great time. <laughs> Curfew call, Maxie. What do we got, fella? Obes, uppy. This is Bobby calling from the Bronx. What's up, boys? Bronxy, Bobby. I'm going to go a little off topic, and I definitely, definitely got to put NBA pussies on the milk carton for crying to the ref and crying to security that people are heckling them and, getting, and they're getting thrown out of the games 
because the NBA player can't handle it. This is unbelievable, guys. You never heard real players like Jordan or Bird complain to the ref about heckling. It's got to be something done. It's embarrassing. It's a sad, sad state of existence. <laughs> anyway, boys, just wanted to know your thoughts about it. And uh, love the podcast. Keep it going. And uh, you guys are good for the game. Rest in peace, Hazy. Bobby from the Bronx? Bobby from the Bronx. Fucking beauty. What an accent. That's nice. Hates basketball. Listen, I, Max, great job. This is a great curfew call because I, I, was, I always talk some hoops with Binger and obviously we're at Hall Pass Media Basketball Establishment here. I've noticed that these NBA guys, you just go around and punch each other in the dick lately. Like, what the fuck is going on with that? The LeBron dick got, punch. LeBron got punched in the dick and some other guy got punched in the dick. Well, what, what is that about, Max? See why these guys punch Do they you? wear cups or no? I don't think they do. No, not in basketball. What if you got a Woody out there? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Well, that's a good point. But I mean, what's going Why? Why are they doing this, boys? I mean, I, the two, the Dylan Brooks, the Dylan Brooks on Braun, and then James Harden got ejected for it too. Both times were just incidental hits to the nuts. I, I don't, don't know. Incidental I don't really is a think. Word. I don't really think it's on the players. I think these refs are just trying to make something happen because both times was literally the making an offensive move or defensive move, and they just hit the guy in the nuts. Build one bridge. People don't remember. Well, as a yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bridge builder. Build a million bridges. Suck grab, one dick. Grab one dick, and you're. <laughs> I you're mean, a dick puncher. <laughs> you're a dick you're puncher. You're a dick puncher. Listen, so the one on James Harden, I see what you're saying. You, I'll give you that one. But Dylan Brooks punched LeBron James square in the dick, and I think he was trying to do it. I uh, think it's a bad look for the NBA. I can agree with that. Dick punch is not allowed. Why, why would you just punch it? I'd we'll punch a guy in the Kick dip. him. Kick him in the nuts. Like we <laughs> had that too. And B kicked a guy in the balls too in game wow. one or two. Yeah. So they've had a guy kick two guys. One guy kicked in the nuts and two guys punched the nuts. Yeah, I see. But they're not allowed to punch in the head. So maybe they get away with it. But can you get suspended for the dick punch? I mean, guys, because yeah. you can get suspended yeah. for a punch, punch. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I mean, he did get suspended. If you punch a guy get, in the dick. They both just got ejected from the game. They didn't get suspended. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. To, and I would say to um, Bobby Brox's thing, I'm with him. These basketball players are such pussies when they get chirped now. But the one that gets Westbrook fired up is when they call him Westbrook. It's fucking <laughs> great. <laughs> this guy loses his fucking marbles every time they call him Westbrook. He goes bananas. Like, suck it up. They're, they're, they're paying... Three thousand dollars to sit on the court. You're making forty bananas. If they call you Westbrook, who gives a fuck? Call him whatever you want. Well, you right? can't call him whatever you want. Well, but no, you but you can't. Can. <laughs> no, you're a fan. No, you can't can call him whatever you want. In brick sport baseball, they heckle the whole time. It's like what, what you're there for. Brick killed the guy. Yeah, Brick killed the guy. <laughs> I, I, would, uh, I would hide for a little while there. I, I would say, listen, I used to love hoops, man. I loved it even when and you know when Kobe was doing his thing when LeBron first came in the league, and then when you go all the way back to MJ. I was young then. But I remember the MJ battles. The bad boys were a little bit young for me, but obviously watched them through some documentaries. I mean, every sport's getting soft, but you could put basketball at the top of the list top, for softness. Top, top. I mean, it is soft. Oh, by the way, hockey's soft. You, you know want what? to be honest? You know hockey's what? fucking soft. Who's this fucking guy? We're talking I got about deal guys with. getting right. suspended. Who's it's this fucking Stanley Cup playoffs. Hey, what's going on out there? So, hey, by the way, now that I'm on the topic here, Obi, I have fucking something to pick with some nerd. Out in uh, Boston. Who is this guy? Did you have a Twitter battle with him? No, but he, I mean, I, I wanted to, but I was busy yesterday. I was doing dad duty. His name is um, Monopoly Guy. This is him, Mark Madden. He looks like Monopoly Guy who had like a massive uh, cheeseburger addiction. <laughs> so a fat mop Monopoly Guy. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. He says, uh, tougher and bloodier. Hey, sigh. Spoken like a borderline NHLer who never won. Ooh. Oh, okay. Borderline NHL. Never won. Got 800 fire. games, bud. Fire. Put the whistles away in quotations. That's why hockey ranks seventh among the fourth major sports. Is his is his little fucking thing against me for what I said was these refs put the fucking whistles away yeah. for one. Fans want to see five on five hockey. They don't want to see like you said. We were going to talk about this, but like overtime fucking penalties, all this stuff. Like let these guys decide at five on five. Put the wheels like it's a war yeah. out there. Yeah, bloody yeah. But your teams get fucking hurt bloody whatever yeah this motherfucker well, we're gonna get into that He's right? a big keep, nerd, him, by keep, the keep him tied up to keep him up there we're gonna come right back and we're gonna get right into what up dog's talking about with the milk carton when we get right back welcome back to missing curfew the up dog is fired up he's gonna fucking suck that lip boomer right through he's just fired up i love it uh milk carton presented by our good friends at life force promo code curfew uppy my results are in 
Just got to call the person this week and get my results. Then they're going to send all my stuff to me. Easy peasy. Uh, looking forward to it. So Life Force promo code curfew for now 20% off. They bumped it up for curfew listeners. The milk carton up, dog. You obviously want to throw that numb nuts on the milk carton, right? He's there. on the milk carton. Monopoly boy's on the milk carton. Mark, Mark Madden, Monopoly guy. <sighs> I, I'm going to say this. I, I've tried not to get on the refs, but it's, it's just, it's too much. I mean, these refs, I was going to say the guy's name. I'm, I'm going to pussy out here right now because I'm not going to say it, but you know who you are out there. The, the dry saddle slash on, on Dowdy. Like, are you kidding me in game That's three? A joke. Just leave it alone. I know. Leave it alone. It's, That's exactly what we're doing. Dowdy's been chirping all playoffs. Dowdy loves to chirp. It's dry sidle Dowdy. Let them fucking do what they do. It's what are we talking about? It's not about you, refs. I agree. Oh, it was a great it's, point. Yeah, it's it's terrible. It's not about you. It's two of the best players in the game right now. Dry the second best player in the game. Dowdy, two cups, Olympic gold medal. They're battling. Dry comes over to him, chirps him, gives him a little whack. Do not call that. Listen, there's just been too many refs having out having an outcome in these games. And and to me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tag it with OT penalties. Like <sighs> you weren't happy last night, were you? I just I haven't been happy all playoffs about them. Like when yeah, you get to overtime, I, I, unless I it's a clear cut scoring chance or a guy gets high stuck in the face. Like like a one that last last night on Confer, he got hit with his mask. It fucking hit his mask. And he goes back with his head, and I'm like, that's not in his fucking lips. Yeah. You can hit the guy on the helmet. Big fucking deal. Find out if he's actually like hurt, but I agree. It, it needs to just stop, but it's something it pours down from the, from the top of the league. Like why don't they want these little scrums? By the way, the best part about hockey too, is when these games are fucking over, like say it's five, two and the fucking melees just start like that's playoff time. That's where you get to like, all right, fuck it. You know what? I got a minute and a half left in this game right now. I'm going to fucking go out and do something. I mean, there was a pen, like there it. was a penalty last night on Ranton where they called it on Seattle, but Ranton literally was holding the other guy's arm, and the <sighs> ref the ref fell for it. You dumb fuck, like I know, these I know. dumb fucks. In overtime, they're gonna call high sticks. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. A guy gets hit in the face with a high stick, you're gonna call it. A slash that breaks the guy's stick, they're gonna call that. And if you take away a scoring chance, a legitimate scoring chance, call it. Other than that, fuck off. Like, don't. Oh, did you hold, hold, did you hold him? No. Come on, these guys have worked their entire year to get here. I want to see a five-on-five five OT winner. So I don't do want to see I. a power play goal. I know. I agree, I agree so much. I don't much. want to see it. I hate it. You and everyone else. Like, enough. Enough of it. It's, it's, and if, it, if you're right, if it's coming from the boys up top, then mm -hmm. enough with them. Like, let these guys ref the game the way they want to ref them. I know. It's pissing me off. Man. I know. It's so true. It's pissing me off. Uh, and then another thing to parlay mm -hmm. into that up, dog, before I turn it over to you here, is, is way too much embellishing from the players. It starts with Michael Bunting, who... We will see if Sheldon Keefe puts it back in the lineup for game five because they're 3-0 without him. But Bunting was jumping all over the ice. Everyone in the league's doing it. As an ex-player, boys, come on. But I will say this. I think they're doing it because they know how these refs, that they can get them, right? And, and if I had the opportunity to win a Stanley Cup, I probably embellished a couple times out there too. I'm not saying I didn't. But as a fan and ex-player, enough with the diving around, boys. Like, let's just, this is the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yep. Play hard. And it's integrity. And refs, too. put your whistle away, and they won't be embellishing. If, if they don't think you're going to call these little ticky-tack holds and these little whatever little hooks under the arm. So it goes hand-in-hand, hand, but I'll be way too many embellishing for me and way too many penalties being called. So refs and players, I guess, milk carton city. Little insider info, but why do you think, like, the media doesn't jump on the refs? Like, they're in bed with each I other. would say this. I thought come playoff time, they're the, re the refs should other. have to. They're they, dick-punching each other. They should have to answer the media. They should have to talk to the media after games. What, when they decide games from their calls, yeah. Did you see the article uh, or did you see Rod Brindamore um, before the playoffs in an interview talk about like going back to just there should be one ref on the ice? Yeah, that's great. There should be one ref and one linesman. You know one what? Line Get out of the fucking way. That's a lot of skating for the one linesman. Yeah, but he just goes, <laughs> he just goes back. <laughs> He's got to do maybe, both okay, Maybe he didn't say one linesman. But mm -hmm. I was like, I, I think his point being was less is more. Our game's better when less is more, right? Totally. It's, it, that's exactly it. Rod the ball. And another one, the fucking interference call on Marcus Felino in game four, which that's they scored on the power play. By the way, are you fucking kidding me, boys? That's what got me ticked off on Twitter when this fucking guy, that, when I'm saying this is not a fucking hit, put your whistles away. You don't exactly. think fans want to see Mark Felino come in and drill a guy like that, create a good scoring chance? Interference. Fucking oh, fuck. Joke. It's a joke. It's a um, joke. So, refs, you're on the milk cart and put the whistles away. Just let the boys play. I, I wore the shirt here. But zoom in. Let the fucking boys play. It's Stanley Cup playoff hockey. So, 
Uh, anybody else? I, I I got a couple more guys I'm firing on there, by the way. But do you want to jump? No, in well, I'm just going to talk about this because I was a little I was hard on them uh, the other night watching the game when they were down three nothing. The Edmonton Oilers, uh, you know, the, their team play for one. I think they all need to ramp it up. You cannot rely on just scoring five goals a game to win in the Stanley Cup playoffs. You need to win battles all over the ice, whether it's picking up your fucking wingers coming up the ice. You cannot get outworked by the other team in the NHL playoffs. I look at the Edmonton Oilers as a team that has, you know, they got all the skill in the world, but if they don't win these one-on-one battles and they take dumb penalties, they're going to end up losing it. And can, fucking, this is Connor McDavid's year. It has to be. I've, I'm betting the fucking, I've been betting the house on them so far. And it kind of comes down to this, like Darnell Nurse, for example, who's making 9 million. I wish he was making 900 because he probably would play better. He's He's playing like he's not ever going to be taken out of the lineup. And there needs to be some sort of desperation to his game. There needs to be one-on-one battles, one all over the ice. He goes into battles with his stick high obes. And it's, you know, you play D before. You got to go in fucking ready to, to battle. Use your stick. Get involved. Um, in front of the net, he's getting beat all over the ice in front of the net. That, to me, is an area. If I'm his teammates, I'm going, come on, nurse. I need you here. You need to be our fucking backbone back there. I can't just, we can't just play fucking. He's been awful. He's been awful. He's been fucking awful. I have, I've had two, two or three ex NHL defensemen. Two of the three were fucking offensive D guys. Text me, say nurses, hockey IQ is embarrassing. And that's what it is. It's not that I don't think he's trying. I think no, he's trying, just, but you, he just his hockey IQ up dog is not where it needs to be. I mean, he just, he's not the smartest player I've ever seen out there. And he makes bad reads. He leaves the front of the net. Uh, I'm putting Darnell Nurse on the milk cart, and it, it, they, I think they can get by LA with him playing like this, but they can't win the Stanley Cup. And I'm doing it again. Yamamoto, enough. I mean, yeah. enough. Um, we're going to get into the Oilers series here in a little bit, but well, next actually. But Yamamoto, I know you're trying, buddy. And I know you're a little undersized, but you're on my milk cart again. <laughs> I mean, he had a chance in game four that uh, Corpusella made a good save on him. But uh, he's on my milk cart. Yeah. Dog, so. I don't, yeah, he doesn't look like he's that you're having a good time out there. I mean, let's get into the Oilers series. Actually, sure. there's one thing I want to talk to you about real quick. But that was the milk cart presented by our good friends at Life Force. Promo code curfew for 20% off. Uh, a little gambling segment here brought to you by uh, DraftKings. Promo code curfew kings. Ray Ferrero, your buddy Ray, at the, start of, at the start of payoff said that, that home ice doesn't matter like it used to. And I said, chicken parm, I fucking disagree with you. I want the last change. I want McDavid out there when I want him out there. And I want my D guys out there when I want my D guys out there. Well, Obes, maybe you should put yourself on the milk carton because chicken parm is right. She don't matter. Road teams in the first round ready for this shit are 19 and 12. I mean, what kind of hotel? They're staying at the Four Seasons. Those yeah, pregame nice meals though. are nice. Yeah, yeah. The blackout curtains. Your kids aren't waking you up. Jerking off before they go to bed. Stay light. I mean, that's incredible to me. 19 and 12 up dog. So for you degenerate gambles like myself out there, <laughs> up dog, I'm blown away here. I, a 19 and 12 brother. Yeah, I've been a lot of close games. I, what I've loved so far in this gambling talk, there's been a lot of comebacks, but oh, it's the man. penalties. It's the fucking refs are deciding. They should be locking up three nothing games getting come back. I mean, uh, I without mean, the penalties though, it's... Could you ever come back from 3 nothing without penalties like that? You would never lose a 3 nothing lead back in the day. Ever. Ever. Now, maybe that's why they want the fucking penalty. <laughs> I but don't know. When it goes to overtime, just let the fucking boys play. Like, that, that's just my point. Yeah, I was, I was on a heater, and it's officially turned on me. I was, I was loving life, and now last night I went 0 for 3, and now I'm up against it. There's a couple series that have turned on me. But anyways, for you, you gamblers out there on DraftKings, 19 and 12 road teams. So either maybe go the other way. Maybe now the home teams are going to hit, or, or if it continues... That's up to you to decide, but I just thought that blew me away, up dog. So let's get into it here. We talked about it a little bit. Kings, Oilers, uh, what a gutsy win for the Oilers, man. That I was, mean, down wow. three nothing. I just want to say save something. their season, but save their I season. I just want to say something. Jack Campbell, I said it continuously on this podcast down the stretch that this guy's you gotta help him. You gotta play him a little bit to find his game. Kudos to Jay Ridcroft. They did that. They played him against the Ducks. They played him against these other teams. He found his game a little bit. Um, I don't know if they've announced the goalies yet here. Let me look up, dog. Stuart Skinner is back in net tonight for the Islanders, which is shocking to me. I thought, Jack, I thought Jack Campbell played unbelievable. Yeah. I thought it was be his net. 
going back to Skinner. Gutsy win, man. Gutsy win for the Oilers. Down 3 nothing. McDavid, dry shuttle to show takes over. Uh, and then Hyman on the OT winner. I loved it. I, I, I think... I think that really hurts the LA Kings. I mean, they they were up three nothing. Yeah. They they could taste a three one. I know. I could feel. You could see it on their bench. There, you could see it in um, Doughty's face. Like they were having fun. And then it was one, two, three. Now, uh, something about Zach Hyman. He was fighting the puck all game. I mean, I, it was unfortunate to watch because I was like, I, f- I felt bad for him. I felt like he was struggling. Maybe an injury. Maybe broke his fucking hand or something. He could not hold on the puck. To see him score that goal, to lift the Oilers back into, you know, home ice advantage going into game five, huge for him because he's a, he was a streaky player this year. He'd score and score and score. He'd get a little cold, but had a career year. He needs to get going. Evander Kane scoring that goal for Fuck. them to tie it up. Kane was Kane, horseshit before then. Yeah, so th- this is this is trouble. I think I, r- I wrote it on Twitter too, but a couple takeaways was now that Oilers got Hyman and Kane going, it's exactly what LA did not have to have happen. Yeah. I, I would say I figured that Woodcroft was going to put 97 and 29 together in game four. I guess like, what was he waiting? Like, wh- I guess he wanted to see maybe if he had the depth this year to beat LA without having to put them together. They put all the big boys back together. 29, 97, 91. Kane finally gets going. Nugent Hopkins, Hyman, Yamamoto. You know, and then I look at their team. Ryan McLeod, got to get going. Bugie. Have a fucking heartbeat. Warren Fogle, invisible. Costin, I love him. They cut his ice. I don't know. The same old problem, I guess, is what I'm saying here. Obviously, their, their, their lack of depth yeah. has been hurting them a little bit. But So tonight's game, I mean, tonight's game, this is now Tuesday. We have a game, game five. Oilers, minus 215 on DraftKings website. Yeah, that's, I, that's you I know, figured it big favor. You know, you're getting a good value bet picking the Kings again at 185, but can they yeah. can they put that one behind them? It's I'm tough coming the off Oilers. a loss. I'm hammering the Oilers. Yeah. Hammer them. I think the biggest thing about this series, Uppy, is game six is not till Saturday because of fucking Bingers, Lakers, and the Clippers. If you're Jay Woodcroft, you are going to play 29-97. I mean, I would play with 30 minutes tonight. Yeah. Because they got three days off before the next game. Yeah. So for them, play them right as much as you can. Three days off to relax. I think it's such a big advantage for the for the Oilers because the Kings have more depth. That if I'm Jay Woodcroft, like I said, I'm playing the piss out of these guys. Yeah. He's got three days off. You're gonna make yeah. You're gonna make some lines play against these guys that don't normally get out there, right? Exactly. Exactly. Like you're gonna. Push. You're not worried that you play in two nights. You're like, yeah. I got three days off. These guys are machines. They'll get some rest. Won't practice for two days. Get an IV. Whatever they do, I don't know what they do up there. Yeah. I'd play the piss out of those I two just guys. want to see the Oilers come out and like bang and be a team that would made it to the conference finals last week, like last year. Yeah. Be a team that comes out and pushes like physically. Like that's the way they need to play. And then you, and then you put them on their heels and all of a sudden you're in a spot where you're like, okay, McDavid can do his thing. Yeah. Got to be aggressive. Got to stay out of the box if you're the Kings too. You can't take penalties against this team as we all know. And then my boy, Vinny Darnay. I love you, big boy, but I, I, once again, you forget about playoff hockey, right? He's had a couple little, yeah. Move the puck, big boy. Again, I Move think the he's, puck, big boy. Now, now, going back to what we said at the beginning of this podcast, now how do you play your game with the refs calling it? Like, he, he's, he can't even go out there and fucking cross-check a guy anymore. You love the way he played down the stretch because he was playing physical and being involved. Well, now he's taking a couple penalties, and he's like walking on eggshells. Yeah. And he's had, and he's a couple of times he's holding on to the puck a little bit. Like I think it was in game three. I was literally yelling at my TV, "Move it, big boy! Move it, big boy!" He I mean, you did pickpocketed, and they went in. I don't know if he took a penalty or scored, but he's had a couple of plays where I'm like, he looks like he's a rookie. And I forgot, come playoff time, it's hard. I mean, my first playoff series, I was terrible. I think I was minus six in the series. It takes some, it takes some time to get adjusting, and he's yeah. made some plays that he hasn't been as good as I thought. Yeah, he was gonna be. no, you're right. You're right. But uh, come on, oil. great game five. Mate. Come on, oil. Jets, Golden Knights, huge win last night for them. They went into the Winnipeg whiteout and just, I mean, what a comeback game. Listen, game three, they almost blew it, but found a way to win in overtime. But character wins, I guess, is what I'm saying, Ups. Buddy, I I agree. Look, last night I was on the wrong side of it there. I had Winnipeg. I thought there's no way this team's losing two at home. Um, No Josh Morrissey is a big-time killer, man. No Josh Morrissey and then losing... Shifley in the first, you know, it looked like his shoulder or his hand in a, in the first period. Oh, his shoulder. He went in hard. He tried to battle through it, but he... Is it, was that after he shot that puck and he went flying yeah, over the goalie in yeah. the wall? He went so in he hard. Just, yeah, yeah. So he's done. 
Um, it, look, those are just two big, big players. That's like losing McCarr and McKinnon to these guys, you know. And yeah. unfortunately, Vegas. Now, to your, to your, um, whatever you've liked Vegas all year. I they have. are playing great hockey right now. They're they're just they're solid. They're not making much. Mid- Mark Stone is playing the way he needs to play. He's back. He looks healthy. He's making fucking quality plays. He's being patient with the puck. He's he's using his stick like he can. Great defensively. Um, he's making players better around him, and that's a big you know it's a big difference in this series. I agree. Look, I got to give some love to our boy Ike's four points in four games. He looked nervous in game one. He's been great in game two, game three, game four. You're right about Stone. His feet have come, right? We know it takes yeah, some time. He's come, he's come back. Bersois, I, I got to be honest. I did not think this guy was the answer. He's proven me wrong. And I want to give some love to Keegan Kolasar. Gets in a fight in game th- three. Gets rewarded with the goal. That's the hockey yeah. gods, man. He has to play that way. Like, I, listen, as a guy who did it, it's not fun. I don't think if you asked him, he said he likes fighting. In fact, I'm 99% sure he doesn't, but yeah. you got to do it. Got rewarded with the goal. Uh, Shea Theodore has been great. Your boy Petro has been good. Their back end is their, is their bread and butter. So, um, And I wanted to say one thing on the Winnipeg whiteout. As loud as they are, when it's going bad, they're so quiet that it almost makes everyone nervous. Like I think they got to find a way in Winnipeg to still They're stay too up. smart, though. I know, but they like, need to fucking dumb it down a bit. If I'm on the couch and I'm nervous for these guys, it's so quiet out there that's like at least make a little bit of noise for these guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I just think they're, they're just a little too smart. And you never say that about people from Winnipeg. <laughs> but they know their hockey and they expect, but but you're right. Like if you're in Carolina, if you're in fucking Seattle, these people are going nuts. And we could they could be down five nothing. I know. They're just they, all they know is to cheer and watch hockey and you know, cheer their team on and go hit some guys. And I'm watching it last night and, and they, Vegas makes it whatever, four, three or whatever it was. And you could have heard it. I mean, the guy from the top row could have yelled down to the guy in the bottom row and said, Hey, how's it going down there? Like, it's just so quiet that, uh, but the white out looked amazing on TV again. That, that place is when they are rocking a tough place to play, but I think they got to find a happy media, but not just go library when they're losing. So, um, Vegas looking good in that one up dog. Here we go. This is your series. You love Kraken avalanche. Um, fucking huge win for the Kraken. Yeah. So I got to let me I'll start. What the Kraken did to the Avalanche in the first four periods of, of the series, I have not seen anyone do to the Colorado Avalanche. Not ever. I mean, they shut them down. They beat them to every loose puck. They were faster than them. They were hungrier than them. Uh, and then what was ever said between the first and second period of game two woke the Avs up. Uh, I didn't get to see game three, but you, you were there. And then game four last night, I mean, McKinnon to me didn't have his best night. I think if he would have, they probably would have won that game. But Seattle, man, they're they're proving me wrong. Up, either playing a great team game and they're playing hungry, hungry hockey. No, they are. I, I think Seattle doesn't realize just how good their system is when they just go. Like we, you know, I think we had a little chat with Rick Tockett today, and he explained that this team is a is a get the puck out, put it in space, hunt, and and you're right, they hunted so well in game one. They put the Avs in spots in game one that the Avs have never seen. Like, oh, where did this guy come from? He's not supposed to be there. The Seattle Kraken have this, this mojo going around, um, you know, even like watching Tanev fly around the ice and just get pucks deep. Fuck what I like to grab that Daniel guy. Daniel Sprung is a guy. He got, back, he got back in the mix with a nice goal last night. Yanni Gord, to me, is their heartbeat. Uh, Jaden Schwartz has been carrying the weight offensively, missing McCann last night. Schwartz, he stepped up 11 shots on net. Um, you got great play on the Jordan Eberle overtime goal. Matty Beneers, Matty Beneers, uh, so ISO camming him, he's a little, he needs to put on some weight. But yeah, he's young. He's young. But if you watch him, he, he'll go in an, an open area with the puck and make a play that's not a hope play, but it keeps the play alive. And he puts his teammates in good spots um shout out to this morgan geeky kid missed game three had a baby girl um during i actually had mixed feelings on that i'm like do you not play in game three or do you you know do you just get over to the hospital as soon as the game's over or maybe like (sighs) maybe can you get in the lineup as soon as she comes out maybe do the math and don't be dumping loads nine months before it could be the Stanley Cup playoffs right got to dump i I would not be knocking out my i would be like okay if we make the playoffs when does it start it's inevitable, but well, I mean, just, I think just thank God you didn't do it the wrong way. A one. little more planning in that. I'm going to say this: Wenberg, 
Alexander Wenberg, he's got the worst fucking style I've ever seen out there with the tinted visor and the one earpiece. What do you get hit in the ear with a puck? I you don't see know. That earpiece? He reminds me of Patrick Berglund, but Berglund was better. Terrible the style. Same, same sort of. No? Remember Berglund, Berglund had terrible style too. But he they play the same. Big pussy that he was, eh? Nah, he's a good guy. <laughs> he's a good guy? Yeah, pussy hound. Oh, good for him. Uh, I'm going to say this. Jared Bednard, I would throw Big McDermott on the fourth line. To do what? To just fucking go out there and just have him out there. And I would go up to Orleski and say, you touch one guy in this team tonight, I'll fucking knock you out. Uh, Alexia? So I would bump. Yeah. This is what I would do. This is not going to happen. I, I know it. I would take Ben Myers. i say, Ben, go sit anywhere but here in front of me because I've seen enough of you, Ben. I would put <laughs> oh, Cogliano yes. up to the third line with Ellers. Lars Eller, Malgan, Cogliano. Yeah. Then I would go Newhook, O'Connor, and I would put Big McDermott in there. And I, he's not going to play a regular shift, but I would say, you go to or Orleski and Larson at the start of the game and say, you touch one guy, my coach is giving me the green light to jump out here. I would do that. It's not going to happen, but I, I, I'm i still old school. Maybe I'm a dinosaur, but I would dress him because I think Orleski and Larson, the D-men, are doing whatever they want out there. And it's pissing me off. Really? So I, I, I don't think me Olexiak's been a, been a factor physically in this match. Well, they, they, they're not doing a good enough job getting the group hours blue paint. I mean, I think, I think Seattle's defense has done a hell of a job protecting Grubauer. I'll a just, I'll just say this about the Avs. If they hit the net, it oh, would be, if, if they could hit the net, and, and I love Bo Byram, he's missed the net on so many chances, like McCarr, Devin T Devontae, they just need to fucking hit the net because, buddy, the chances that happen in the Stanley Cup players, we wa we're watching it over and over again. It all happens from the point, but you got to, A, not get shots blocked, and B, you just got to get it fucking on net. Because the puck stays there. Yeah. I, I agree. They've missed on that way too much. Bull Byron, mark my words, has a huge game five. He always plays better when Kale McCarr's out of the lineup. And listen, You're from right. the Avs perspective, they've had Kale McCarr in the lineup for 20-some games this year. They can win without him. I'm not joking about the big boy McDermott. Get him in there. Get him on the four check. Get him going. Uh, he'll play five minutes, but I'm just having him out there. I think it's something because, like I said, the Ben Myers kid's not, not the answer to me. Well, so I, I, I could see it happening. I mean, listen, I could see it happening. Yeah. Do you like that Nieto? No, he's terrible. Yeah, I don't think he's, he's, <laughs> he's not terrible. A, I know he that, shouldn't be on the second. I mean, listen, they, that's they, their weakness. They got right no there. depth. They got no depth. Yeah, they got no depth. I mean, w without Nachiskin, who you heard is I out know. for getting banged up at the hotel. Is that what you heard? No, I, did someone just wrote that, or uh, Frank Cervelli tweeted it this morning. I think that um, personal they, reasons. Yeah. I don't know. I'm worried. I'm concerned. And listen, I, I double dipped them after they lost game one. I bet them again. So I got a lot riding on this series. I need them to find a way to win this game. So great series up, dog. Kudos to your crack. And you called it, man. They were playing hard. Let's see McDermott in the line. Let's get the big boy in there. Eastern Conference, Lightning Leafs. I mean, listen, Morgan Riley. You see this guy right now? Two black eyes. And I've been saying it for years. Get out of your comfort zone. Morgan Riley. Good for you, fella. Warrior. Warrior. You got in a fight. Didn't go your way. I don't care. You got two black guys. You're scoring OT winners. You're playing unbelievable. Him and Luke Shen have been a nice pair. Um, I don't know, up dog. It's 3-1. Now, could you imagine if they blew this one? Could you fucking imagine? And, <laughs> and the fact that he's been unbelievable. He has been. Yeah. A game changer. Yeah. And I love, you know, I was watching the game the other night, TNT. We had Darren Pang calling the game. And it, it's great when he highlights just the difference of having a guy like O'Reilly in your on your team, whether it's him on the bench, him winning a face-off, him being in front of the net. Little things that this team, they need to be reminded of how to play winning hockey. Like, it's not just fucking score more goals than the other team. It hasn't worked. And Dubas, hell on you, bud. You fucking, you fixed an, and addressed an issue is having quality fucking guys in there that play both, that can play at both ends of the rink. They're there now, and the younger guys are feeding off him. And I think Orion O'Valley's, he's been the factor. He's been the factor. He's been the factor, and that's why he got the nickname. And listen, I got to give Sean Keefe credit. After game one, he moved O'Reilly down to the third line with the young kid, Matthew Nyes, and Nola Chari. Been, it's been a good little it's been a good move, been yeah. a good little move there. Fucking anyone but Alex Kerfoot to score the game winner on me when I had the Like, I hate that guy. What is Radish doing in front of the net? Like, just knock it down with your glove. It's yeah, a little yeah. muffin Playoff wrist time. Like, I, I would take a clapper to the fuck. face right now to be in the fucking Stanley Cup final. The face, the you face. know what I mean? Not yeah. the face. The arm. The yeah, arm. The, the arm. arm. The arm. The, the, leg, the leg, maybe. Not no, the I'll face. I'll take one off the ankle. Listen, Kyle Dubas, you mentioned him. What did you think about him going, like, yelling at the fans in Tampa in game three? Do you like that? I mean, this guy goes from sitting in the corner saying nothing to patting Spez on the back to telling Tampa fans to fuck off. Like, he's an emotional roller coaster, this guy. Yeah. Um, 
you know what? I, I, I guess I didn't see the, the lead up to it. I, I love to see the lead up yeah. and like who the fans are. He was chirping like, Girls and kids and shit. Oh, no, stiff. I don't think. I think it was just a couple of drunk lightning fans. If it's a couple of in the nosebleeds. I, I, I don't know if personally I would be engaging like that with fans, knowing that like I'm the, you know, the GM of the team. I, I just, yeah. it's a little unprofessional. I don't think you're going to see Stevie Eisman doing that. Like you're not, you, yeah, and you're not a fucking player. If I'm a player on the bench and someone's fucking looking at me, throwing popcorn at me the whole game. Yeah, I'm going to do it. But no, you know what? You're like the GM. You're just fucking... You're exactly right. Yeah. Steve, if I was a GM, I would always ask myself before I did is something. Is Kenny Holland going to be fucking yelling at people? No, like, Come on. No, Kenny's a little long in the tooth for that. I would say, like, what would Stevie Eisman do? Now, yeah. I like the passion from Kyle Dubnas. I There's mean, this guy, right he's there. on the hot seat. Like, if he's on the hot seat and they're, you know, they're, 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 they look like they're going to win. Are you, are you going to stay here on your podcast? Is this over? Is it over? Uh, I took the Leafs in six. So, yeah, I'm going to say it's, I'm going to well, say the Lightning give them a go, but it's, I think they probably want to win game five. No, they don't want to really go back to Tampa. Oh, you they're going to go back to Tampa. You think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's what the question was. Did I think if it goes back to Tampa, it's going to go seven. I mean, Vasilevsky, did you see the thing? Vasilevsky's been the worst lightning. Yeah. Listen, I'll say it right here. I do, I do think it'll go seven. You do? Yeah. Now, now I do. Wow. I think it'll go seven. That would, be, that would be some good tension there in Toronto. Well, what's Coop's message to the squad today? We got nothing to lose. Yeah. Fuck it. We lose. We still got our two Stanley Cup rings. We win. We come back here for game six. We win that one, boys. There are souls are going to pucker up and who cares? I'd look at Worm and I'd say, Worm, they know what happened to you last year. They, they know what happened last year and the year before in Montreal. They've outplayed them. They've yeah. outplayed them. I mean, game two, the Leafs rolled them, but I thought they outplayed them in game three. The Leafs stole one with the fact daddy. And the, I can't believe what happened there. It could be 3-1 Tampa. I know. But every series we could say, these their series are so close, man. Yeah, they are. Um, I'm happy for fact that he looks good. He had a great little interview. Do I look nervous? He stole your boy. Yeah, Benner's line. It was great, unbelievable. Great. So we'll see what happens. Game five Thursday in Toronto. It'd be buzzing there. Uh, Islanders hurricanes. This one's a good old fashioned snooze fest, isn't it? I haven't watched a whole lot of this one. I am going to take the hurricanes tonight. I think it's over, but you got anything to tag no, on this? I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I did. I thought the Islanders, uh, the arena looked great. Fans are, they're into it. Bo Horvat. He's still just head in the clouds. He hasn't been there. I think his points are everything just is, is Poor Struggleville, Horvat. Struggleville and Horvat land. Um, but now I would have liked to see it be more of a series, but I think Carolina deserves to get out of the first round this year. They're a team that's always been in it. They're a great built team. Um, be interesting to see, you know, be interesting to see if they can bring their game to the next level to get out of the East. Cause the East is, is a, is a beast. The East is a beast. It's a beast. It's a beast. Uh, did we do the Minnesota Dallas series? We didn't do that one either. 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two, party time. This is a good old-fashioned slobber knocker. I'm a little worried. I took many. Dallas Ottinger, man. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. And and they're getting the fucking their play from all up and down the lineup. Like last game, Seggs. Seggs yeah. gets a goal. They're getting, they're getting contributions from everyone. Their D are involved. But you're right. Ottinger is a game maker. He's a game maker? Game maker? Game changer. Game changer? Game maker, whatever you decide. The rain maker. No, he's, he's been their best player, man, and he's fucking good. And watching last year against Calgary, that first round, he could have stole that series. Um, two great teams that are battling it out. I, I have Dallas winning this. Yeah, I still think Minnie's going to get it done, but I'm really, really concerned. Uh, just put the whistles away in this series. I mean, the, the, the way, if it gets called the way it's been, it favors Dallas, in my opinion. But mm -hmm. Marcus Fleno's been a beast. Uh, Gustafson, I thought, you know, has been great. But Ottinger was unbelievable in game four. Uh, Panthers Bruins game five Wednesday. They got an extra day off because of the Celtics game. Uh, I think this one's over. Good, good effort by the Panthers, but I mean the Bruins are depth is they're, just they're good. And then if you're the Leafs and you do win, congratulations, you get the Boston Bruins. It's just like how are you? How are you? But um, no Bergeron. I think Bergeron may be back for game five. I'm not sure about Krejci, but the Bruins are going to be a tough out up dog. And then last but not least, your Devils, bro. Wow, it's a series. It's a series. The team will just not go away. How about how about my boy Jack? I, I can't believe Frosty, it. Frosty, thank you for uh, appreciate the jersey. Game used. It's fucking juicy. Love it. I love that the first period they're, they're they're just getting peppered and Jack Hughes is like cheating on a breakaway and then he gets a breakaway. He yeah, he felt the turn. I think he felt it. Right? <laughs> fucking felt it. Yeah, something I never he, felt. He was before. fucking cheating for a breakaway. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, look at this little fucker. What, what a it, move. It changed the whole dynamic of the game. The whole game. Yeah. By the way, they're goalie. 
So Remind me his I name. This goalie, Devils, first man. two games ever, yeah. he's fucking Alex Sakira or something. Schmid. I, I didn't know they had that guy. Schmid? I don't. Yeah, something like that. I I don't even know. He came from. He's in the jungle all year. I didn't know they had that because I I figured Vanacek wouldn't be that good. It's a series. I I have this going seven with the Rangers, but I didn't see. It. I'm worried because obviously up two nothing. Who wins the next game? Who's your pick? I'm going to take the Rangers, but that's just because I'm pot committed now. Yeah, I'm on tilt. I they lie. are built for the playoffs. It's well, they just where were they last going. game? Yeah, where were they last game? I mean, the biggest thing for me in game four was the Devils D. Uh, Marino, his length, Severson, um, Dougie Hamilton. The Devils didn't give up anything. Yeah. And they keep trying these fucking hope plays at the blue line, the Rangers, trying to do cross ice sauce, chip it in behind them. I, I don't know. It, it's on. They've showed a lot of character up, dog. Um, they look nervous in game one and two, but they've, I mean, a little- going into MSG and taking th- two games is. That's that's a dagger. Do you think they just stay at home the whole series? I was wondering. We should text Frosty and ask him this. Are no, they, no, they stay at the hotel on MSG. Hundred percent. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. But but that's a good question. I'm just I'm totally speculating. Yeah, but yeah. I, well, I would we'll say Frosty. they go in, they get the hotel room, and they're chilling. And yeah, but great point. I mean, they're only fuck. It's away. What side of the river are you on? What side of the river are you on? Come on, Rangers, don't fuck me here. So uh, it's been a great playoff up dog. The games are so close. They're so close that we shouldn't be betting on them, really, yeah. because you don't have. I mean, I would. Even I thought I had a read on a couple of series, like I said, and it just switched on me like that. Switched. I so, would even say so. So, were you asking me? Sorry to touch on this again. Were you asking me if the New Jersey Devils stay in their place or the or the Rangers stay? In their I'm place just saying they're both teams just staying at home during the series. I would even. I would bet that the Rangers, even playing home games for New York, would stay down, tell together. They would. I think. I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if a coach came up to me and said, hey, do you want to stay in a hotel? Because a lot of the guys live out by the practice room. I think you get them down there and they're just with the team. You get yeah. the, the room and you're just hanging. But I, I, I would rather stay in my own bed. But when we, when we were in the league, I had a roommate. So maybe it'd be different now. If you get your own hotel room, yeah. I have no problem. But mm. I remember my first year in Tampa, Torts made us stay in a hotel at home. Fucking guys were sneaking out of the hotel every night. For right? sure. Fuck, I want to go sleep in my own bed. Vinny LeCavier, you think he wants to sleep at the fucking Hyatt? The guy's got a fucking... $10 million mansion. I'd be like, Vinny, go sleep in your own bed. He's got the Haston's bed, the fucking $80,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let him go sleep at the Weston. Uh, it's been a great playoff. I, uh, Raph's again, we'll, we'll just let the boys play. Let them play. Fuck boys, it's playoff away. time. Nobody comes for you. Last but not least, get this guy a beer presented by our good friends at Labatt. Um, Morgan Riley, get this guy a beer. Yep. Two black eyes. Getting out of his He's comfort on my zone. fantasy team. Out of boy, I've been dying for someone on the fucking Leafs to look like they Dougie Gilmore back in the day. Morgan Riley, you look like Dougie with two black eyes. Good on you. People were chirping him before the series. Is he as good as? He's your best defenseman, hands down. Yeah. So Morgan Riley, get this guy a beer. Uh, Morgan Barron, seventy-five stitches. This yeah, goes back. Wow. To- oh my God. Thank God, bud. <sighs> that was hey, scary. You're tough, but you're lucky. You're fucking lucky, man. Your eye was an inch from being Gonzo. So. Glad to see you're back at it and going. Why do you miss fucking two shifts? Fuck. You guys, a machine. That one there made me happy and happy to be on the couch. I know. <laughs> I was like, oh, I want no he part like of that. He's all healed up now, though. He's wears his helmet and he's just got good flow. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, get this guy a beer, Corey Perry. Corey Perry went twenty five. The last twenty five games of regular season, Paris had one assist. <laughs> game two, game one, he has a goal and two apples in the series. He's got two goals and three assists in four games. I mean, Corey Perry, get this guy blue light. Yeah, he yeah, is so he's a, a playoff, playoff guy. guy. Playoff guy. Good and for you, Worm. You got Mark Stone, right? Mark Stone. I mean, come on, Mark Stone. You're back. Your back's good. Good for the golf. It must be good for the playoff hockey. Um, man, they're a better team when he's going. And he it, is going. Yeah, he looks good. His foot speed's a lot better than game one. He's starting to get his feel back. I mean, he's, he, he's in the game. He he's gave, confident again. He gave Howden a backdoor tap in last night. It happened. <laughs> it was fucking that. Uh, and then last but not least, I got him on my list. The fact daddy. Let's get the fact the daddy. Factor. Blue light. Factor, love you, fella. Beard looks great. Snapping around. I know you like Jameson, but in this case, we get you a blue light. Yeah, you're the I mean, only reason I picked the least to get out of the first round. Fact daddy. Right there. Yeah, so... So big games tonight up, dog. We're going to watch him here at Hall Pass Media, buddy. I love getting into it. Free Kale McCarr. Free Kale McCarr. Uh, <laughs> He's only locked up for one, Oves. He's locked up for one. I'm nervous. You're a beauty. Binger, uh, Binger Maxi, Hall Pass Media. Thank you, boys. That was missing curfew. Fella. Oh, uh.